The Fundamental Concepts of Family Therapy In this section, we will focus on the work of Nichols, but I also highly recommend that you also read the Begfar reading that has been placed on Funda for further study. Before family therapy was introduced, the individual was regarded as the locus of the psychological problems and the target for treatment. Any issue, such as a child struggling to adapt to parent separation, prior to the introduction of family therapy, would have only required the presence of the child and the therapist in terms of intervention. Today, however, with the introduction of family therapy, most therapists would meet the child and the parents together. As a counsellor, while unpacking such an issue with the family, you might at some point have a now what feeling. You can't solve the problem for the family, but you need to help them deal with why they are having the problem. To address what in fact is making it hard for the family to cope with their problems, you need to know where to look. And in order to do this, you need to have an understanding of what makes families tick. And in order to do this, you need a theory. Family therapists, instead of concentrating on individuals and their personalities, rather place focus on how problems may be, at least in part, a product of relationships surrounding them. In this section, we will consider some of the key terms that help us understand these relationships, namely cybernetics, system theory, general system theory, constructionism, social constructionism, attachment theory, we will also consider the working concepts of family therapy, which include interpersonal context, complementarity, circular causality, triangles, family structure, and resistance. It is important to note that the family life cycle is also a relevant working concept here. However, we will not address it in this section as we have already covered it in a previous section. Cybernetics is the first and perhaps the most influential model of how families operate. Cybernetics is the study of machines that regulate themselves. How this relates to families is that both have a tendency to maintain stability by using information about its performance as feedback. The cybernetic system is useful in relations to families in considering how Firstly, behaviour in families is consistent, and secondly, how change in families is very difficult. Central to cybernetics is a feedback loop. Feedback loops are how a system gets information necessary to maintain a steady state. These were introduced by Gregory Bateson. Feedback loops can be positive or negative in nature. The distinction refers to the effect they have on homeostasis, not whether or not they are beneficial. Negative feedback indicates that a system is strain off the mark and that corrections are needed to get it back on course. Whereas positive feedback is information that reinforces the direction a system is taking. On this slide we have two graphical representations of feedback loops. Figure 1 shows the basic circularity involved in a feedback loop. Each element has an effect on the next until the last element feeds back the cumulative effect into the first part of the cycle. Thus A affects B, which in turn affects C, which feeds back to A, and so on. Figure 2 shows a similar cybernetic feedback loop of a couple. In this case, John's garden efforts, i.e. his output, affects how much gardening gets done, which subsequently affects how much gardening Sarah has to do, which then feeds back, i.e. input, to how much gardening John thinks still needs to be done, and so on. Cybernetics in relation to families focuses attention on family rules that govern the family's homeostatic range, negative feedback or mechanisms that families use to enforce these rules, Sequences of family interaction around a problem that characterize the system's reaction to it, i.e. feedback loops. And what happens when the system's accustomed negative feedback is ineffective, triggering positive feedback loops. It's important to note here that negative feedback can be seen as mechanisms used to enforce family rules, whereas positive feedback 
occurs when negative feedback is ineffective, and positive feedback loops either destroy a system or can help it, the system adjust to change circumstances. If one considers counselors working from the cybernetic approach, cyberkinetically orientated therapists would strive for second order change, distinguishing it from first order change. Second order change would look at change in family rules, whereas first order change considers family how family changes behavior but is still governed by the same rules. The system theory. The concept of the system theory came into being in the 1940s, and it had its origins in mathematics, physics, and engineering. According to the system theory, a system is an organized group of elements that function as a single entity. How this relates to families is that families can be seen as more than a collection of individuals. It is an organized network of relationships. Furthermore, Systems can be understood by looking at process and structure. Process would take into account patterns of interaction, whereas structure would take into account the arrangement of the interacting components. How does the systems theory impact upon the work that we as family counselors would do? If we go into a family counseling session with a systemic framework in mind, it would affect our thinking in the following ways. Firstly, we would see the family as the client and the primary unit. We would also acknowledge that all members contribute to the well-being of the client and that every family is impacted by the relationships, rules and roles of the larger system, which would include aspects such as school, work, church, etc. In terms of relationships, we would look at relationships inside and outside the family. In terms of rules, we would look at at patterns of communication and behavior as well as boundaries and in terms of roles we would also take into account the exceptions of family members. As with other theories we have considered before it is very important to acknowledge culture of the family that we're working with and as we have discussed before that sometimes we will need to adapt Western theories to the different cultural contexts that we are dealing with in that their beliefs, values and myths may not fit in with that of a Western culture which most of these theories are based on. The General System Theory This was developed by Ludwig van Burton Lafay, who was an Austrian biologist in the 1940s. He believed that science had become reductionistic, i.e. looking at it looked at the parts of the machine without examining it, its relationship to other parts. Some of his ideas that have shaped that family therapy include concept of a system as more than the sum of its parts, emphasis on systems as subsystems of larger systems, thinking into action and studying the whole system, and open systems, those which continue to interact with an outside environment i.e. we need to acknowledge that the family is a system but also take into account the way it is embedded in larger systems with which they interact. These are systems of community, culture and politics. Constructivism. This is an epistemological paradigm according to which knowledge is actively constructed by the observer. The implications for family therapy are a greater emphasis on cognition and a greater emphasis on the subjective experience of individual family members. Constructivism has moved family therapy in direction of individuals' cognitive experience and away from traditional emphases of family therapy. Emphasis is on reframing, which is the relabeling of behavior to shift how family members respond to it. Social constructivism. Social constructivism expands constructivism in that it takes into account that the way we perceive and relate to the world is shaped by our social context. Therapy with this in mind is a process of deconstructing unhelpful narrative accounts of experience and then helping people reconstruct more promising ways of looking at things. The most direct application is found in narrative therapy.
Attachment theory. Attachment theory explains how even healthy adults need to depend on one another. Attachment means seeking closeness in the face of stress. Infants use their attachment figure, which is usually their mother, as a secure base for exploration of the world and are able to rely on the caregiver as a source of comfort and protection. Attachment theory is applied to clinical treatment by linking symptomatic expressions of fear and anger to disturbances in attachment relationships. We will now focus our attention on the key concepts of family therapy. Firstly, we will look at interpersonal context. A person's behaviour is influenced by interactions with the family. In helping people solve their problems in an effective way, it is important to meet with them as well as the important others in their lives. Complementarity. This refers to the reciprocity which is the defining feature of every relationship. In any relationship, one's behaviour is yoked to another. If one person changes, the other person changes. In the counselling context, the family counsellor, from the perspective of complementarity, sees one person's contribution to a problem as only half of a pattern of mutual influence. Circular causality. This is enormously useful for family counsellors because so many families come into family counselling to find the cause of their problems and determine who is responsible. Instead of joining the family in a logical but unproductive search for who started it, circular causality accounts for communications and relationships in explanation of the causality of problems. Triangles. When two people cannot solve a problem between themselves, they will pull in a third party. Understanding the triangular nature expands the therapist's lens and opens up the possibilities for intervention. Process or content. Focusing on the process of communication, i.e. how people talk, rather than content, i.e. what they talk about, may be the single most productive shift for, that a family counsellor can make. A family normally comes into counselling focused on content. The family counsellor, in carrying out this concept, would talk to the family about the content of their problems, but would be thinking about the process by which they try to resolve them. Family structure. This concept encompasses the idea that families can be understood by assessing the boundaries between various subsystems within them. Subsystems are determined by generation, gender and function, and the boundaries that demarcate subsystems can be described as invisible boundaries that regulate the amount of contact with others. Resistance. Human systems are reluctant to make changes they perceive as risky. Families may fear what might happen if their conflicts are brought out into the open and thus may resist focusing on their most sensitive problems in the family counseling context. And this is something that is important to bear in mind when meetings with families within the counselling context. Family narratives. These help people identify oppressive stories and co-create with them new and more empowering accounts of their lives. Other concepts which are also key concepts in family therapy include the family life cycle and culture which we have included in previous sections that we have covered. And lastly, there's also the concept of gender, which you can explore in your Nichols reading that has been prescribed and is on Funda. And after doing this reading, you can further consider in the practical applications block the concept of gender. And you will find this block in the outline, lesson outline for this section.